E-bikes, electric bikes, are seem to be everywhere these days. Their uh, popularity is expanding. And I would have thought that electric motorcycles would uh, be, uh, their popularity would be growing just as quickly, but not quite the case. But they will be, according to a new Guidehouse research uh, marketing note. And we're going to talk to its author, Ryan Citron, about that. So welcome to the interview, Ryan. Great to be here, Marco. Now, why don't you give us an overview of your study, please? Sure, yeah, so it's a global study of the electric motorcycle market, uh, really focusing in on what are the key barriers preventing this market from growing. As you mentioned, there's, you know, it's a bit strange that it's not growing quite the same as e-bikes and scooters, and we can get into that. Uh, we also looked at what, what is driving this market and why is it gonna be growing over the next 10 years? And then a lot of uh, emphasis on forecasts and looking at where are these being sold now? and where are the regions and countries where we expect the most sales over the next 10 years. So my understanding uh, is that sales will be growing primarily in Europe and Asia and less so in North America. Why is that? Well, it, a, lot, a lot has to do of, with the percentage of the population that already owns a scooter or motorcycle and how familiar they are with the technology and just kind of the use cases that they are actually using motorcycles for. So in Asia, you know, two wheelers are the mode of transport for commuting and for transporting goods and, and getting everything done. Whereas North America, it's really about long distance uh, driving, leisure riding. And, and that's why there's been such a big difference in uptake between the different regions. And I suppose the uh, existing internal combustion engine motorcycles have got a, a real hold on the market. I mean, judging by the number of Harley Davidsons and other big bikes that I see come out every summer, it's kind of part of the culture. It's, 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 it feels different here than it does say in Europe or Asia. Yeah, I think the attitudes are different. I know riders like the noise and the riding experience associated with gas motorcycles. So there's a bit more of a judgmental attitude towards electrics. Whereas I think even let's say in Europe, for example, you know, consumers are much more open to electric uh, mobility. And as you see with you know e-bike uptake there, it's much higher. And they haven't had the same issues with you know, bicycle purists going all over e-bike. Now, one advantage that e-motorcycles will probably have if they uh, very soon is torque. I mean, that's the, the big, uh, if you're looking at performance, uh, the e electric motor is uh, much torquier than an internal combustion engine motor and motorcyclists like that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. are we getting to the point where the batteries are powerful enough and the electric motors are powerful enough that the e-bike or e-motorcycle, sorry, will outperform uh, gas-powered motorcycles? Absolutely. I don't think performance is the issue at all. I mean, if you look at the high-end electric motorcycles out there from Zero and then Harley and then Lightning, these go insanely fast. You know, they are very high-performance motorcycles. The issue is riders are wanting 250 miles plus of range. In order to get that many, that much uh, batteries into the vehicle, the price is too high. So, you know, the, the majority of electric motorcycles we see on the market, you know, $15,000, $20,000 plus, which is just too, too much for an average motorcycle consumer. Now, we're seeing uh, the uh, energy density of lithium ion batteries go up considerably in the next little while, and the prices drop. I just interviewed James Frith. Uh, head of battery storage for Bloomberg NEF the other day. And he expects if, like right now, the average price of a, an EV battery pack is $137. And by 2030, that'll be $58. So that's a significant drop in price. And energy density is forecast to go up by about 50%. So you get a lot more battery for a lot less money. Is that going to play a role in the adoption of e-bikes globally, but particularly in North America? I think it's going to play a huge role, and, I, and the way I see it working is really helping make the case for the big guys to get more involved. You know, you have Harley Davidson, Yamaha, and Honda. Those three account for two thirds of global motorcycle sales, and the only production electric motorcycle between the three companies is the Harley Livewire. So, and that's a thirty thousand dollar electric motorcycle that clearly, you know, most people that's that's not affordable. So. I think as battery prices reduce and ranges increase, you're going to see those companies get more involved. We're already seeing more momentum towards that with Harley's announcement the other day about their hardwire five-year plan, and there's, they're making an entire separate company for electric motorcycles. So I think we're going to see the battery prices play in that way. 
Do you have any insights into the role that policy is going to play? Because there's uh, been a big rollout in the last six to 12 months in climate policies in Canada and you know, throughout North America and Europe. And electrification of transportation, e-mobility is a big part of that. Uh, will e-motorcycles be affected by policy? Certainly. Uh, if you look at countries like Japan, they're going to be banning the sale of gas cars and motorcycles by 2035. Uh, you have other cities uh, in Asia that are moving to go faster. You know, Hanoi and Vietnam is going to be banning gas motorcycles by 2030. Uh, so the, those bans, you know, the major motorcycle manufacturers are aware of that's the future, that's the way it's going. And obviously there's even more countries that have just specifically talked about banning gas cars, but clearly motorcycles are going to be if not, you know, the same time, you know, very soon after. So, so they're aware of that. In Europe, you have lots of cities creating low or now zero emission zones. So, you know, electric motorcycles will benefit from that as well. And the increasing emission standards is also going to be making gas powered vehicles more expensive, the Euro 5 emissions coming into place next year. So I'd see all those three kind of playing a role for sure. Now, it sounds like China is the big player in electric motorcycles currently. I think the noted that they produce over 90% of those. And that's interesting to me because China uh, quite a while ago targeted electric transportation as a key industry that it wanted to dominate. But now we see Joe Biden saying that they want to catch up to uh, China and become the you know sort of the clean tech, clean energy superpower. Uh, do you see that this will be an industry where China and the US, maybe some of the European countries, Japanese, really duke it out uh, with uh, you know, increases in investments and big expansion of production capacity? I don't, I don't see a huge competition directly between them because the types of electric motorcycles are so different, to be honest. In North America and Europe, it's really about the high power, high performance motorcycles. And China, the big reason they've sold so many and continue to, it's, it's really about low power, uh, sealed lead acid powered bikes, which are just much cheaper and much easier for consumers to buy. So I see it as quite a bit different. Um, and the volume kind of shows that. Um, it'll balance out a bit more on the revenue side. So I think you mentioned China was about over 90% of unit sales. They're all, they only account for about 62% of global revenue because the average price of the motorcycle is so much cheaper. So from a revenue perspective, I think Europe and North America can start to make a, a pretty decent dent in the next 10 years. But on sheer volume, China is just going to dominate uh, the way I see Ryan, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me, Mark.